Hey everyone, today we'll mark the beginning of a new series on this channel called RHCEV9 Learning. These videos will be a way for me to demonstrate what I've learned in preparation for the RHCE exam. Since I'm only in the learning process, I can't guarantee the accuracy of these videos. In fact, I can't say that for any of my content. In any case, I still do my research like I always do, so that's always going to be worth something. Anyways, today's video will be about setting up an Ansible control node, and we're going to focus on the installed required packages objective right here. So to start, I'll switch to my terminal and log into one of my rel based virtual machines. Okay, so this machine is running a fresh minimal installation of rel, so we're going to need to connect it to the Red Hat subscription services first. Make sure that you're signed up for a Red Hat developer account, by the way. That's going to be important for this step. Well, I should grab a root shell first with sudo su. There we go. And now we can run subscription manager uh, register and then type in our Red Hat credentials. So this account previously had something called simple content access mode enabled, which is the default setting on new Red Hat logins. But I disabled it, as you can see, so that I could show you the extra few steps you'll need to do if you're without it. It's all very simple. All we're going to do is attach our machine to a developer subscription. You can view the subscriptions you have access to with subscription manager list dash dash available. And by scrolling up a little bit, you'll see here that the developer subscription for individuals uh, gives you access to Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform and Red Hat uh, Ansible Engine. Uh, here it is. So go ahead and copy this pool ID down here, this one. And then we're going to run subscription manager attach dash dash pool equals and then give our pool ID. And now after a moment you'll be able to run subscription manager list dash dash consumed and you'll see here that we have consumed the Red Hat developer subscription for individuals. So that's pretty cool. Now, keep in mind, like I said, you'll only really have to do this if your account does not use simple content access mode. The rest of the steps will be the same in any case, though. We're going to check the repos that we're entitled to now with subscription manager repos dash dash list. And I'm going to do a surrounding grep for the string Ansible. And so that dash A4 in the grep command is going to help us make sure that we can see the repo ID corresponding to the Ansible repo. So uh, here are a couple of results. And let's see. Um, here's Ansible Automation Platform 2.2 for RHEL 9. And this is the one that I'm looking for that I want to practice on. But keep in mind that 2.3 is also available if you'd like to use that instead. Uh, just make sure you aren't looking at the debug or source RPMs, by the way. So now we can just copy the repo ID um, right here. And uh, then we'll just run subscription manager uh, repos dash dash enable and then provide our repo ID for Ansible Automation Platform. After all of that is done, it's a good idea to update now with yum update. So it might take a little bit. We'll just wait for that. There we go. Okay. Now uh, we're ready to install Ansible and stuff. Based on my current understanding, some of the relevant packages we'll want on our control node are Ansible Core, 
uh, Ansible dash navigator and row system roles. So I'll just yum install that and there's just say yes to that. Okay, there we go. And now with these basic packages on our box, we're now free to grab any supplementary modules from Ansible Galaxy. So going back to the study points, there are some objectives here that allude to working with Ansible Galaxy, and it's these two. So I'm honestly not sure how the exam environment would allow you to access the Galaxy server, assuming that there's zero internet access allowed on the exam, but I also can't imagine any other way to look at this. So maybe there's some special exception for Ansible Galaxy, or maybe they run like a localized instance of it on the exam. Again, it's all just a guess. So we can grab some common collections like this. First, I'm going to hop out of my root account because we're not going to need it anymore. And then we can run ansible-galaxy collection install and install the official POSIX collection for Ansible Core. So that's ansible.posix. Uh, so this comes with the Ansible Navigator execution environment, so I'm decently confident that this is going to be a helpful one to pull down. We can also get the Community General collection with Ansible Galaxy collection install community.general, like that. And um, take this with a grain of salt, though, because I have doubts that the community modules would be relevant on an exam like the RHCE. Again, though, I have no way of knowing. And even if I did know after the exam, I wouldn't be able to tell you. So we'll just wait for that to install. So now this finally finished installing. And lastly, we can search for roles with ansible-galaxy search and then query for a role. So I'm not going to actually install any for this video, but I can just search for one, I guess. Um, because like I'm only really familiar with the rel system roles, and we already have that installed on our system. So yeah, here are some roles related to Java, by the way. Pretty cool. Um, so we can also list the roles with Ansible Galaxy with the list subcommand. So that would just be Ansible Galaxy list. And these are the roles installed on our system. So yeah, here are the rel system roles and the Linux system roles, which are just a sim link to rel system roles. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, there we go. Um, one more helpful thing that might be useful is to install a text editor like Vim so we can write playbooks. So we can just do that with sudo yum install Vim. Remember, this is a clean install, so I didn't have that from the get-go. And there we go, Vim is installed. And so, yeah, uh, now we have a pretty basic control node set up. As always, I hope this video was helpful for you, and thanks for watching.